terms of the living in the past kind of thing. Yeah. Because one thing I've I've uh, accepted with myself now too is I don't really do that. Like it, there's a, there's a difference between reminiscing about old things that old stories and whatever. And when I see my buddies I played with talking about it and that kind of stuff, and still being there. You know, yeah. there's a difference yeah. between. Well, yeah, that, yeah, yeah. Right, and and it's important that you you have to come to accept at a certain point whether it's as soon as you stop playing or whatever if you were someone who maybe had a little bit of a potential or had a chance to go and do maybe better things that didn't end up working out is that a lot of this stuff is is things that you can't control you know there's a huge amount of it where we talked about it when we were mentioning the hard work thing it's like you can work as hard as you want sometimes things don't line up for you man and and there's it could be a million reasons for that. You broke your leg. You didn't work smart enough. Your training was wrong. Your there's a whole bunch of things that could have went wrong. And for a lot of a lot of people, because a ton of guys are in the, that position where it's like they were good but just not good enough, or they were good enough but something just didn't go their way, or they made a wrong right turn or whatever. And a lot of it sometimes will come down to get just guidance, like because that's what I've come to accept with myself. Even not saying that I would have made the NHL or anything like that, but I know that I was a good, I was a good player. I know I was a good player, and things could have went different. I could have had a different trajectory if exactly what you said. If I would have done this different, if I would have done, I can play that game all day. But at the end of the day, the the rationalization I give myself is like I did the best I could with the information that I had, you know. And if, had I had I had a, a bit more guidance along the way maybe that would have helped and and that's what you have to come to accept it's like not everybody can be there man and and most guys aren't there and you're not you're not any different than the thousands and thousands of very good players that just couldn't couldn't get over that last little bit for whatever reason you know and if you're somebody who you know you personally cost yourself because of your own stupidity some guys are like that we talked about Ryan Leaf last week with the NFL quarterback Still, even though he can say that was totally my fault for doing that, the guy, nobody, obviously nobody taught him. Obviously nobody, he didn't have any guidance or somebody to lean on to help him work through that, you know? So a lot of times it's it's not even necessarily your fault. And if that's something that can maybe, if you can come to terms with that and start to accept that a little bit, because I see it with guys that I played with all the time too. It's like we talked about, last, you, you talked about your buddy you hadn't talked to for 20 years or whatever. And you're like, you're the same, man. Yeah. You're the same. Yeah. It you know, change. It's that. So there, it takes some, some maturity with yourself to, you know, come and come to accept that. And you have to grow up. But I told bit. my, I told my bud when he, when he called me yesterday, I said, the, the, the great thing about you is you're recognizing a oh. flaw. You know, I said, that's, that's, it, that's progress. The awareness dude. Yeah. Like, oh, that's, that's progress. Huge, that's growth. That's uh self-awareness. That's uh that's a, that's a person that, uh, recognizes he's got something that he needs to deal with and you reach it out, which takes some balls yep. to say, Hey, Hey buddy, like we're friends, right? Hey buddy, like I need, I'm going to be weak enough right now or strong enough, whichever way you want to look at it, to call you to ask for some little bit of help and guidance on something. Yep. You know, that takes some balls to, because yep. you know, at 50, 50, he's, he's going to be 53 as well. He could uh, pretend that everything's under control, but he had the, the guts to call me and say, Hey, listen, like, I, I think I have an issue. Can you talk to me about it? Yeah. And, 100%. and he was so thankful about it. And I was so thankful that I could do yeah. that for a friend. Well, and you have to, you have to be able to move on, man. That's the thing. Cause you can play the, you can play the, if I would have, if I should, I should have done this. I would have done that. It would have been way better. This, but well, it didn't happen, man. Yeah, if I was born right? 10 years earlier, yeah, well, that would have yeah, been great. Exactly. Right. So you can only control what you can control, man. It's important that you start to get, get yourself out of that, accept what happened, whatever, and, and grow up from it kind of thing. Yeah. Well, that's a topic one day, maybe. Yeah. Guys talking about the past, living in the past, the hockey. It's like, it's, it's pretty, everywhere too. It's pretty gross. Yeah. It's pretty gross. Even, even like, uh, I got a lot of friends yeah. played played pro and that's all they can ever talk about. It's just, they never, ever get to move on. And, uh, I guess it makes you feel good, but like, there's cool. no progress. And that's what we talked about. I think last week it's about, you got to progress in life. You got to get, you got to, you got to grow. The, the only evidence of life is growth. And what's, this is my huge thing too. Love hockey, man. I love hockey. It's a great game. It's the best. It's not the most important thing in the world, man. It's very, very insignificant in the grand scheme of life. And when you, you're somebody who, even as a, as a professional or somebody who's just still in the game, us, our whole job is hockey. It's like, if all you ever talk about, all you ever do, all you ever mention, the only time you're interesting is if you talk about hockey. It's a very dull life, man. It gets old 
gets really old. It gets annoying to that's, listen to. That's why. That's why I'm very proud of myself. I don't mean to sound like I'm proud of myself. No, <laughs> no, no. I, but I'm very proud of myself for the fact that um, I could make my life all about hockey. That's right. But I actually, and I've said this when people ask what I do, I do. I own a hockey business, but my purpose is to make people better. And, and it, it comes out in a lot of different ways. So yes, hockey is a microcosm of life and hockey is all the things that you learn through hockey can be applied to life. But my, my most important thing in this is to have someone grow with me. Mm -hmm. So when, whether it's a student in their hockey, like I get very proud of my kids when they start accomplishing. Like for example, we have a very young group, which I never do anymore in shooting. And I'll be honest, if any of you are listening, I'm going to be just be honest with you. It's not my favorite thing to do. And it's like, I, I get ang not anxiety, but I'm like, okay, because it's that one becomes hard for me because there's, I need to it. teach. Yeah. Like, that's what I'm good at is teaching and having a student that wants to learn and, and seeing like huge progress or little tiny increments of progress. And that, that, that I can say, okay, the next step is this. So when you're, when I'm with a seven or 10 year old, that is not at the high level yet. It's like, for me, it's, it's hard work. So, but the beautiful thing was, is that my mindset was like, still be a good teacher, be a good, be, be a good role model. These people give them everything they can. And so all the guys, this is four weeks of this now. And all the guys working, they said like, I'm, I, they are they're like, got to be honest with you, Andy, they're all getting better. Like even the ones that couldn't shoot before. And that's like, okay, that's good. That's growth. Right. And that's what's important is like, and, and so I look at it a lot of different ways. It's good for the students, but it's also good for my employees. If I call them, I hate calling them employees for the people that work with us to see that if you actually put the time in and you have a purpose and you do things properly, that you will see growth in, in the students. So it's like, just because I work with the high end guys, doesn't mean that yours is meaningless, right? There's this, the, the building that foundation and teaching the right way and doing drills that are, appropriate for the age levels when you see improvements like okay i can make so a, a new guy coming in to our business can say okay this is important and i can get results too yep. this is how we grow players and how much how much better is all the people that just heard that whole spiel you just went on how yep. much better is that than well when i played for team canada when i was yeah no one cares 17 yeah, no one cares nobody gives a shit no. about what you did that's right 20 40 50 years ago yeah. nobody cares man yeah. so it's it's not if you don't have something that's greater than just hockey right it sucks to listen to you yeah. you're annoying to be around yeah. it's like you have to be able to break out of that and be able to focus on things that are a little bit more important more significant than yeah. just when you played that one time many yeah. years ago yeah it's like those, no, those five years yeah, of your right? life it's, that you it's not important or relevant anymore yeah. no you know? exactly so, well so all that brings me to the next point 